Hello, my name is Christopher McPhillips. I'm the Digital Marketing Manager here at Aspen People. I get asked a question quite often from some of the team and even clients, you know, is, is video really worth it these days? Yes, to that very simple question, it is. It's crucial actually. Uh, there's more people consuming video every single day than newspapers, magazines, uh, even video podcasts these days are becoming far more popular than you know, the things that my you know, my parents would have been consuming. So yeah, video is, is very much, it's been on the up for years and it shows no signs of actually letting go. So yeah, video is very crucial. But that brings us to today's topic, which is shooting your video using a smartphone or tablet. So we'll look at a few different kind of topics here. So there's a few things that you need to look at and we'll run through them individually. Some I can discuss more than others. Some are just, you know, very simple. Uh, but it's all about making sure that we're shooting far better video than we did previously. Uh, we're not uh, high-end video production masters here. We're all just trying to do better than we did before. So this guide is designed to, to help shoot far better video. So the first one up is, is getting yourself set up, getting ready. Um, we'll look at that one in depth. You know, look at your backdrop or your background. That's something that a lot of people understand, but they miss the point on or they, they, they end up making mistakes on it. Um, next one is framing, something that maybe not a lot of first time self shooters will come across or think of. Uh, but once we get to that slide, I'm pretty sure you'll see the sense in it and think brilliant. And it's actually going to bring your production sort of value up a lot. Next up, we'll look at using portrait or landscape. You know, a very touchy subject, that one, but we'll come to it uh, very soon. Stabilising your device is another one that first time self shooters may not have a lot of confidence with. But there's a lot of solutions out there and we'll come to those in a moment. Focus and exposure and even sound as well to tag that in at the same time. These are things that a lot of us may end up sort of concerning ourselves with. Uh, I've got a few pointers and a few sort of pieces of information that's going to help calm those worries and help us produce far better video. Uh, keeping your viewers attention is something that is crucial. Uh, so we're going to be covering that. We'll look at some other key tips and some frequently asked questions that we've had along the way already. So let's crack on. Like I said, the first one up is getting ready. You have to think of a few things before you actually start shooting. Um, you can't really just pick up your phone and go if you're looking for a particular level uh, of, of production. But there's a few other things that you need to consider before you get on set. Now, is your device fully charged? That's something that I have learned the hard way. Um, now, there was no mistakes made as such, but I put myself in such a back foot, such a negative space while I was on a shoot. I had got on set and I was on like 52%, something like that. And I didn't realize uh, it wasn't charging properly in the car when I was on my way to set. And then when I pulled out my phone to start shooting, I thought, oh no. What if this runs out of battery or not? And at that point, I'm now in a very personal and I'm assuming I'm hiding it well enough, but it's in my head and I'm, I'm now rushing uh, to get things done and being less patient with the actors on that day and it probably put them on the back foot to not produce their best work. And that was probably a little bit unfair. The, the work was absolutely fine, to be fair, and the battery itself didn't run out. But I put myself in such a negative space uh, by not having a fully charged um, phone. So my advice to you is avoid that. You might not need it, you might. So make sure that your device is fully charged. Take along a, take along a power bank with a cable and just keep your phone plugged in if you can. You know, just you can have someone hold it. Maybe it snaps on the back of your phone or the back of your device, that helps, just gives you a little bit more charge if you've got a heavy duty day of, of shooting, you're there all day, you need that charge there anyway, at least for your peace of mind. Uh, switch airplane mode on, so that's one that I have also learned the very hard way. Switching airplane mode on means that you won't get phone calls, you won't get app notifications, 
uh, but fundamentally you won't have those distractions that can just railroad your entire shoot after it's happened. I remember going through a shoot and I got a few one take wonders which was fantastic. Um, a few shots that I wanted to change up. It was a really good sort of day. You know, we've been really productive. Things just seemed to be going our way on that day. Sound was absolutely spot on. Uh, some of the extras were doing a phenomenal job. And the actors themselves, again, doing a fantastic job, hitting the script right on cue, ad-libbing things in when invited to. It was just, everything was going really, really well. And then, boom, I get a phone call while I'm on a show, while I'm recording. And and there's no harm to the person that phoned because they didn't know I was shooting. Uh, they didn't know that I didn't want to get that phone call. So it's really my own fault. If I had put airplane mode on, I wouldn't have got that phone call and I would have had the freedom to continue that momentum with the rest of the shoot uh, and finish it off in probably record time. Um, but I made the mistake. I didn't put airplane mode on, therefore it railroaded the rest of my my shoot that day. Make sure that your area is free and safe. You may or may not know where you're going, but things you need to consider are, you know, human traffic. Are you going to have people going back and forward? Are you going to have noise pollution, which we'll come on to a little bit later? Uh, are you going to have disruptions of any kind? You know, you've done, you've done the things that's already on this list alone. You've charged your phone up. You've got a power pack on the back of it. You've got a spare phone bank, a power bank ready to plug in. Uh, you switched airplane mode on, but if you go somewhere where you're going to get constantly disrupted, then it's just as bad. How do you look? That's a, a great one to, to consider. Now let's just break down uh, break down this shoot right now, this, this video. I prefer to have this sort of stubbly look. Um, it's probably a two day, three day growth on my face. Uh, maybe about a day or a almost two days growth on my neck. That's the sort of style that I prefer, but I may decide to do something different for a different shoot. I'm wearing a, a Czech style, you know, short sleeve shirt. And uh, I like to think that it's quite appropriate. This is supposed to be a conversational type of video, albeit it's, it's, a, it's a monologue, but I'll answer any comments or questions that come in so we can keep it you know, or make it a dialogue at that point. But uh, yeah, think about how you look. My hair doesn't have any product in it. It's just sitting quite naturally where it, it needs to be. Um, if you're shooting something that is very high end or, you know, maybe it's your, your senior management team or maybe your board or something like that and you want a different look, and a different feel, um, then yeah, change the way that, that you look because it's appropriate for that type of shot that it's appropriate for that shoot on that day so yeah how do you look maybe you need makeup i've worn makeup plenty um i naturally have quite dark eyes uh, i don't personally like it but i don't mind wearing some makeup to hide that because it, sometimes the camera can emphasize you know some of these things a little bit more um so yeah whether you're a man, a woman, you need to wear makeup. Don't sway away from it because it, it makes things easier later for you when you're editing your video together. If you need to wear makeup, it's not a big deal. It's to, it's, it's to make it easier for you later. Um, and it might just be appropriate, you know. Uh, I've got some light coming in the window there. I don't naturally have a shiny sort of head, but you know, what if I did? That's going to be a problem. So I'd need to wear makeup to, to help. Next one we're going to be looking at is your backdrop or your background. It's quite a subjective topic because it really depends on what it is that you are trying to shoot and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, so don't think about it too much, but consider the following. Is the area well lit? You know, is the space well lit in comparison to you, the backdrop, the camera, etc. Make sure that you are easily seen. Uh, is the space tidy and appropriate for your shoot? Again, we'll just use this as an example. This shot doesn't blend into this uh, brick wall wallpaper uh, or brick effect wallpaper. It doesn't blend into that. So I'm standing out quite nicely. I've got my uh, gamer style office chair. 
so that's blocking some of the colour out as well. Um, but say this was a branded wall, which if you have one, you should absolutely use it. But say this was a green branded wall for Aspen, I, I wouldn't wear any version of green whilst I'm standing in front of it, even if I gave myself a huge, you know, depth between me and the wall, because I've got a large amount of space to have that freedom to do so, I still wouldn't wear any version of green behind uh, or in front of a green uh, backdrop. It's just going to conflict. Now, and I understand um, you want to sort of, you want to support the brand that you are shooting for. You want to be, you know, using the brand colours where appropriate. That's absolutely fine. If you have something like this, but you have a branded colour uh, that you can wear, then that's when you wear that. You know, I, I could wear a green top with an Aspen logo or some Aspen accented colours throughout it. I could wear that in front of this backdrop or this wall. Um, I'm going to stand out appropriately. If I wear the same colour, I'm going to blend in. No matter how hard I try, I'm going to blend in. So it's something that I would you know, steer away from, really. Um, your backdrop can add so much to your shot. It doesn't have to be an obvious. I've seen high-end suited and booted shoots uh, where they're filming in the most rustic, uh, under perception of things, run down backdrops and, and spaces. They're not in reality, but that's how they look. And it just makes the, the people in their suits, it just makes them pop out of the screen and you, your attention is absolutely on them. That's an appropriate sort of backdrop. That's an appropriate attire. Um, so all of that works. So again, just keep things simple and there's an element of common sense when it comes to what type of attire that you might wear in front of your backdrop and vice versa. So keep that in mind. Framing. This one is not something a lot of first time self shooters would have thought of or even know about. But in the, the film and TV world, they tend to find themselves using the two magical thirds of a screen. And the, the illustrations here try and depict that uh, well. I hope it does. But it's also something that you don't have to worry about too much. And I'll, I'll explain why. Most devices actually have a grid that you can turn on, so you can now start placing people in those magical two thirds. Um, and I've put two dots on each of the key points that you're trying to get. You'll even see in the examples I've got here, they're not absolutely perfect. They don't need to be. And that goes for you as well. So when you're shooting something, yes, now that you're aware of it, you're going to try and stick to two of those magical thirds on either side of your frame. Um, if it's a mobile type shot and your subject moves into the middle by, you know, just by sheer influence of what it is they're doing, or maybe you do, that's okay, don't worry about it, just correct it back again or go with the flow and let it move into the other side of the screen, so the other two magical thirds. That's absolutely fine, but this particular guideline is going to make your shoot far more professional looking. It's one of the best tips that I've ever been given. Um, and I've used it ever since. Not always perfectly, and that's why I'm telling you not to worry about it, but now that I'm aware of it, I'm always, always trying to make sure that I hit two magical thirds when I'm framing up a shot. This next one is, like I said before, it's a massive room splitter. So uh, let's just dive into it and talk about uh, portrait and landscape. Through the evolution of smartphone, um, just by the sheer ergonomics of using a phone in general, you're holding your phone like this because fundamentally your phone is for phone calls. So we have this very natural way of holding a phone. Now, as time has went along, we've started taking photography in this portrait fashion. And for the most part, it's fine. Um, even social media has introduced this growing popularity of, of disappearing stories or just storyboard type videos and a lot of them look fantastic you know we're looking at things like snapchat uh, tiktok instagram stories facebook stories all of these things use the portrait way of holding your your phone if that's how your organization is shooting video 
It's the only way they do it because those platforms that I've just mentioned, that's the ones that they use. Fine, absolutely fine. Otherwise, let's go back to the old school camera. You know, the ones that used to wind up. Let's go back to that because nine times out of 10, this is how you should be holding your camera. Landscape. Using landscape is gonna then give you more options later. Uh, for example, if I shoot in landscape and I later want to then take that video and stick it into one of these disappearing or social media portrait style stories, then by shooting it this way, I can zoom in and manipulate the look of it so it fits into a, a portrait frame. That gives me the option to do that. If I shoot like this, I don't really have a lot of option to manipulate it to look like it was landscape later. In that circumstance, we end up having it extremely close in, zoomed in to the point where it takes away from the video that as I'm trying to shoot. So yes, this has its place, but nine times out of 10, landscape is gonna be the better option for your video production. Uh, it gives you more options, far better production value, and just looked upon as being a little bit more professional anyway. So that's my advice. This is not wrong, but this is more convenient and more versatile. Moving on to the next topic, which is stabilizing your device. Uh, for self-shooters, this, uh, or first time self-shooters, this is one that can panic someone very easily because if you don't have particular equipment, it's sometimes it's hard to stabilize your, your device where you need it to be. I was very creative in my early days of shooting video and I would have um, clamp arms that go on the side of my kitchen bunker and I would use the lighting coming in from the, the kitchen and it would hang over the it would hang over the sink and it would it'd be very cumbersome but I was able to shoot something that you know was, was okay quality back then. Um, but I got even more creative and as you can probably see from the, the illustration. I would stack up books and then create this little ledge to then place my my phone on on top of so then it was it was secure so I could shoot away without any issues um, but what I would recommend obviously is spending a few bucks on a tripod it doesn't have to be super expensive you can get them for like five pounds you know go up to 20 pounds for a, a a cheap one you don't have to get these fancy well-known branded ones if you've got budget for it brilliant you know it's just an asset that, that goes back into a box when it's not being used and it's the company's forever more until they need it uh, but if you're looking to do this initially uh, on a, a smaller budget then you can get tripods that that are cheap all you're looking for is something that is going to hold on to your phone clamp on to securely even if it's portrait, but clamp onto it very nicely. Focus and exposure is the next one that we're going to be looking at. And I won't ponder on this one too long, simply because your smart device can do a lot of this work for you. So long as you don't play around with settings that you don't know how to set. I, for one, I'm not overly familiar with these high-end professional shooting cameras that have all these different exposures and... and and frame rates and all this sort of thing. I don't, I don't have that expertise, so I don't use them on, on my smartphone. So I'd recommend, if you don't know them either, to not use them. A lot of the time, self-shooters, and certainly first-time and experienced self-shooters, will use filters because they feel like it makes the shot better. Uh, and granted, sometimes they do for certain things, but by and large, for what it is, that you're looking to shoot a video for, I would not recommend using filters because it does mess around with the focus. It does mess around with the exposure on your camera. So when it comes to that, let your arguably expensive smartphone do the work for you. Focus and exposure actually leads us on to, to sound very, very nicely. Um, it's something that a lot of first time shooters, uh, self shooters will maybe panic about, uh, but, Smartphones have developed so much over the years that actually we were forgot that along with the improvements on, on features, on uh, hardware, on cameras, 
we forgot about the fact that the microphones have also improved over the years as well. Are they high end, you know, movie level uh, quality? No, but they're far better than they used to. For this particular shot, um, I am not using my Yeti microphone, I'm using the microphone on my iPhone. Um, the phone is about a meter, just maybe less than a meter away from me and the sound is absolutely fine for what it is I'm presenting here and what I'm trying to achieve with this, this video slash presentation it's absolutely fine and I'm using this setup deliberately because this is essentially going to be what your first setups are when you're shooting on your own I don't want you to panic and think I need to go and get a big fancy microphone I need someone to stand in the room and learn how to use it with me while I shoot um, I don't want you to panic any, about any of that, it's, it's, not, it's not needed. The microphone is going to be absolutely fine on your phone. Even if it's in a, an extremely controlled environment, you could probably go as far as a metre and a half away. Um, if you go more than that, then there's obviously other options that we could look at. But for what it is you're trying to do when it comes to self-shooting, this setup that I hope that you'll mimic in some way when you're doing your own is perfectly fine and the sound is good. Keeping your viewers attention is something that is going to make your video just absolutely pop of professionalism. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, we're not we're not professional presenters here. Um, looking down the barrel of a lens for a, a prolonged amount of time is not something that naturally comes to us. And you might be thinking, well they do it very easily on TV. It's a very different setup on TV. They have massive, massive cameras with people that sit on them. They have auto cues that are the same size as a TV in your living room and they, nine times out of ten, the presenters have written the script themselves so they already know it. It's very hard to always maintain your eye contact on the camera lens but in doing so, if you try it, you're going to maintain the viewer's attention. So keep that in mind. Now obviously attention span is different as well in these days so changing up your angle from time to time is going to help maintain the viewer's attention. If you change it up, it then just keeps, it's, it's very, you know, it's not even a conscious decision, but constantly looking at the same thing might be prolonged and boring for someone. So changing up the angle or changing your tone of voice or changing what it is you're doing, it helps maintain that viewer's attention. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. Now, if you do decide to reshoot any of your sentences from a different angle, uh, make sure you're just keeping the same eye line. So picture this, I'm obviously looking at the barrel of the lens here. Let's picture this as a, a separate camera that I have already set up. I could set it up here, hopefully you can catch this, so, but I'll move it out of the way. So just to illustrate, this is the angle I'm going to look at or uh, have set up, but I'm going to continuously look here. Now let's just drag that out of the shot, possibly. I could set the camera up there and in post-production I'm going to flip from that angle to that angle while I'm talking. On this one I'm not going to be doing it obviously, but it's to illustrate a point. If you set up a second camera or you're quite happy to have something marked on the wall where your eye line was and then set up your camera to change the angle and then continue to do those two or three sentences, it gives you some b-roll footage or some cutaways, something to then switch things up so the viewer's attention is actually maintained. Really good tip for that one. Other key tips, there's always lots of key tips, so don't be too hard on yourself. This is supposed to be a little bit of fun for you, albeit maybe the role that you are looking to fill or the project that you are filming is maybe semi-serious, but you're still supposed to be enjoying yourself while you do it. So smile throughout your process, don't be too hard on yourself and ask for help if you need it. Um, there's nothing wrong with asking for help sometimes. Uh, I, for one, in the past I've struggled to do it and I'm getting better better at it now, but there's, the, there's nothing wrong with asking for help, so just do that if you need it. Next one is if you want to use the same video across all social media platforms, if you want to do that, you have to then keep the video at 2 minutes and 20 seconds, probably 19 seconds to be absolutely sure. Um, and the reason for that is Twitter has a limitation of the, the length of video that you can put on there. So if you want to use the exact same video that's going to go on Twitter, to also put it in the rest of your social media platforms, then that's what you're aiming to do. Now, if, 
for example, you're quite happy to have your full length seven minute video on LinkedIn and Facebook, but you don't mind having the shorter version on Twitter, then, then fine, this sort of key tip maybe doesn't really apply to you, but it definitely applies if you want to keep a continuity of video through all platforms. So keep that one in mind. But maybe actually your extended version can go onto YouTube or Vimeo um, and you can share the link to that video on all of your social media platforms to say, look, this was just a little taster clip. Here's the, here's the full version or here's the complete version. That's something that you can definitely do. Um, we mentioned this before about getting a tripod. That's another tip. A lot of tripods these days come with a ring light attached, so you can find them on Amazon or your favourite sort of hardware store. You can find them and they're still reasonably cheap. Uh, the reason I would say use a ring light is because not only do you want to secure the area for noise traffic and noise pollution, you want to be able to control the lighting. I've already sensed that a couple of times the lighting might have changed in here, so arguably I, I wish my ring light was here a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, have have a light source that helps you maintain the, the, the light. Now, if you can't find a tripod that's also got a ring light on it, it's fine. Just get a separate one when you have the budget. They are still really cheap. These things are all ridiculously cheap when it, you're, you think of the grand scheme of things. So consider that. Uh, something else, because um, it comes up a lot. What if your video, or what if the way that you're setting up your shot is requiring you to then be more than two metres away from the camera or the person in front of the camera is going to be more than two metres away. Well, you can actually get things called lapel microphones. You've probably saw them uh, before or noticed them on sort of talk shows. It's the little sort of clip-on microphone. Nine times out of ten, you'll see that they're all tucked in, you know, underneath someone's shirt or, or, or top or whatever. These days in, uh, in 2022, I've just saw people have them just dangle out. Each to their own, there's no wrong there. Um, but yeah, these lapel microphones with extra long cables then help uh, with the sound quality if you're gonna to be too far away from the sort of local microphone. Um, so yeah, definitely consider that. Don't use Zoom on your camera. Just to extend that a little bit actually. Don't use the Zoom function on your camera whilst you're actually shooting. You don't need to. If there's a reason that you need to zoom into a shot um, to get a little bit closer, do that in the post edit. But doing it during uh, a shot, certainly for what we're all going to be doing videos for, it's not required. It's really, really not required. You might see this on the likes of uh, you know TV shows, you know your high end TV dramas, uh, movies, all that sort of thing. Bear in mind what it is they're shooting with, uh, massive, massive pieces of equipment, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds. And a person on camera who has done that for years or they have put in tens of thousands of hours to practice a particular effect, a particular technique, they've done that over and over and over and over. Now, if, if you're one to take a challenge and you want to do it over and over and over again, that's fine, you might master it, but as this is really aimed at beginners um, or the low confidence self shooters, I would recommend you don't use that zoom feature uh, on your, you know, on your your uh, your camera whilst you're shooting. If you need to set up a static shot when you've got the long cabled lapel on, and you think right, well I've got that sorted, I can hear them very very clearly, but I'm too far out. Yeah, zoom in, leave it flat, leave it secured, let the zoom be there. Uh, from start to finish, don't do it. Don't do it during the actual shot itself. Use royalty-free music uh, behind your voice or behind the presentation. I've done that in a few of the Aspen People videos so far. Not in this one. It's not required, but it helps with the production value element. It also helps with the attention span. It helps create a mood, an atmosphere for something that is you're trying to achieve. It's definitely one of those sort of little tips that if you can do it and they're widely available, absolutely, you know, stick it into your video, just bring the volume right down so it's not drowning you out as the, the presenter uh, or your actor who's presenting for you. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of low key music just to set the tone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, another key tip is to, to practice, practice this. 
over and over again. Like I said, some of these, you know, these top professionals that you see their work on TV, they've done it over and over and over and over again uh, at university, on the job, they've just done it over and over again. Now, I'm not saying before you do your first self-shoot video that you need to put in 10,000 hours worth of practice. That's not what I'm saying. But if there's something that you're doing for the first time, setting up a camera, making sure the light source is, is, is going to be good, taking note of the time, the weather, uh, all of that's going to be pretty crucial to making sure that you've got a, a well-maintained uh, shot or, or a, a well-planned continuity of a shot, uh, especially if it's something you're doing that has a very specific output. Um, so practice all of that. Practice using your camera. Practice using your stand. Practice using everything that you need to before you go on set. Now, one of my favourite bits, uh, we're near the end, I promise, uh, but uh, let's look at the frequently asked questions. A few of these have came from the team and some from clients. Uh, some frequently asked questions were used to actually build this particular guide, um, but here's, here's some others. What if I make a mistake? It's a good question. Don't worry about it. Just do it again. Some of the shots that you use might be used for a b-roll anyway, but if you make a mistake on anything, just, just do it again. And if you make a mistake, just, just do it again. Just do it again and just do it again. Uh, I'll tell you about a time really quickly, actually. I was on River City. I was just an extra. Uh, might have been the last time I was on, I believe. Anyhow, um, it's a BBC production. And on one particular scene, they shot the same thing. Must have been about 25 times. Now, with me saying that, you were thinking, yeah, well, obviously someone was, you know, fluffing a line or something like that. And I promise you there, there wasn't. The actors were absolutely on point. The technical staff and the technical employees around were absolutely on point, certainly from my observation. Um, the equipment, the dolly that was set up, absolutely fine. Nothing wrong there. Uh, quite often there'll be flyovers with airplanes. It's not a terribly heavy, you know, airplane traffic route, but sometimes there are planes... Uh, hobbyists sometimes they fly over it's not a lot um, but on this particular day it didn't happen at all so I was racking my brains for so long trying to figure out why they're shooting this 25 times uh, I'm not saying it's a mistake but if they got the shots right in the first two or three um, but then they saw fit to then do it you know still over another 20 times then it's okay for you to shoot it again and again and again, and again, and again, and again, if you make a mistake. So don't worry about it. You're, go you're going to be good. Our next frequently asked question. Can I use the flash on my device as a light? It's a fair question. Um, this particular light is actually pretty strong. Uh, so I would recommend that you don't use it for the shoot that you're aiming to be doing. I, I assume a lot of it will be talking about the vacancies that you have coming up, talking about your, your organisation. So I would recommend you don't use that light. Use something more natural like a window, shoot it outside, um, get a ring light, something that you can have natural light or have something that you can set to a certain level and then maintain it for the whole thing. But the device light or flashlight is, is pretty strong so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend it. Okay, so the last frequently asked question is actually a really good one. I'm going to read this one out. Could I use my front-facing camera? Yeah, absolutely, you could. Cameras these these days are phenomenal. Like this is just an iPhone eight, and the front-facing camera on this phone is a million. Not maybe not a million, but it's a lot better than my rear-facing um, lens from my first camera or first uh, smartphone that I got. Um, so yeah, just on that small statement alone, yes, you could use the front facing camera on your smart device because the camera is actually pretty good. It's not as good as your rear facing one, but it's still pretty good. But here's a couple of caveats to, to using your front facing camera. Once you're finished shooting the footage on your front facing camera, remember to go back into your photos and, and videos folder. Um, you know, it's an iPhone. So I'd go into immediately the photos app, find the footage that I've just shot, edit. Uh, the, the footage, don't do anything special with it, just flip it horizontally, just flip it round. That way, 
any logos that might be in the background, certainly if you're using a branded ball, you know, a branded backdrop, you want to flip that background so your logo is the right way around. Um, or any logos, have I got logos? No, I don't have logos. Um, but if you have logos on your top, uh, or you have your company logo on your attire somewhere, and you you shoot it with a front facing camera, it's gonna be backwards. So you just, you wanna flip the whole thing around before you actually start to edit. So remember that. Another thing, um, it's a lot, see, rear facing cameras are easy to, to keep the eye line, you know. Um, I say easy, I probably drifted away a couple of times looking at my, my notes and whatever. Um, but that's a lot easier to keep your eye line on than that, that little bit there. It's a lot easier. It's not impossible to maintain your eye line here, but it's it's harder. And you will quite easily, and, and this is, there's nothing wrong with this because we're all looking for eye contact when we have conversations. But if you follow me on this one, if you use your front facing camera, you will, perhaps when you first start doing it, you will find your eye line going from the lens here to over here. And you're now no longer looking at the viewer's eye, you're now looking at what they're wearing maybe their neck just go to buy you know the middle of my phone compared to the lens i want to maintain this not this it's easier said than done it's a lot harder if you're using this camera it's not impossible so thank you for the person or to the person that, that put that question in but yeah it's not impossible it's just a little bit more difficult so thank you again then for your time. I really do appreciate it. Remember and follow us on all the socials, Ask Me People Limited. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, I would really appreciate it. It makes it some more of a, uh, a dialogue and it has been quite monologue-ish because this is just a presentation video and it's only been me speaking. So uh, by all means, please do leave a comment. If you have any of your own tips you want to share with the viewers, you know, drop them in. Drop them in the comments, I'll happily reply. Everyone else can learn, everyone else can do better self-shooting videos and we can all present ourselves in a far better way. Um, my name is Christopher, this is Asking People, we are only our leaders.